Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. I've got Brian with me. How's it going? Uh, we're going to take, we're going to unbox a Pro 400, a Profitech Pro 400, pull a shot of espresso, pull another one, make some drinks, get, and set it up as well. And we will take questions. If you got them, we got Brian, say hello, Brian, back there. We'll get your questions out to us. We'll save some of that for the end, but you can ask the questions right now and we'll get those up there. Uh, so, Brian, oh, and we do have a 400 here already go, but we're going to get this one running. Yep. Right? We're going to... We'll unbox it, see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Brian, while we're pulling this down, what is what is your responsibility here at Olaf? Uh, I am the tech manager. I do technical support mostly, uh, helping folks out, be it on the phones and emails or even on CoffeeCast. Hey, that, oh, that's right. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with an expert like Brian here. Zoom call deal through using our coffee cast. Go to the website to do that. It's free. And yep. you can get a demo of pretty much any product or help with any product that you need. So do check that out. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's. Oh, I get the heavy end this time. Okay. Out she comes. Get a nice little cover on it here. So if you picked up a new 400, congratulations. Very nice machine. Take that case off. Oh, we're going to need a little something to cut the. Uh, I think, did we keep that knife around? Uh, yep, got the knife right here. So it's got it's got the little uh, tie down here to keep everything nice and neat. Yep. Sometimes they'll have the uh, zip tie on there. Sometimes they won't. So if you uh, get it like this, scissors are going to work better than a uh, Utility Zacto knife. knife. But let's see what we can get here. There, there we, go. we go. Okay. All right. Let me lift that okay, up. So you got. There's a put. There you go. So what do we get in the box over there? All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that on this machine we have the flow control device installed already. Uh, anytime you get a machine from us, we are the ones there installing the flow control device. Uh, so when we do that, we actually take the stock components, that's the mushroom, the screw that goes where the gauge is now, and the uh, extra spring that goes down in the infusion valve down below there. Those are all going to come inside the box in case for any reason you want to switch back. All right. Get rid of this. Also inside there we have the spare disklets, so oh. you can customize your machine. Like we got the green ones on there. Oh, yeah. I think that looks really sharp with the wood. Yeah, we'll take a look at that in a minute over here. You see it? I do like the green with the wood, so you make it a little prettier. Green's also my favorite color, so I'm a little <laughs> impartial. All right. Uh, so we also got our manual. Everybody read reads there. the manual, right? Everybody reads the manual, <laughs> yes they do. Got a drip tray. Uh, this one does not have any of the laser film on it, so yours may, it may not. Oh, we got the nice little hole down here, so maybe before oh, yep. we throw that on there, we got the back flush got disc. back flush disc, has a little uh, hiding spot right there, so you always know where you forgot it. Slide your tray in there, all right. We've got two porta filters got your single spout and your double spout. I'll throw the double spout on there real quick. Nice. Set this off to the side. We've got a cleaning brush, cleaning out your group head, and we've got a tamper. A tamper. Beautiful. Um, so let's get some water in there, right, and get this thing filled up. Yeah, let's do it. And we'll talk a little bit about the machine as we go through here. I'll get the lid off. So the reservoir, oh, the reservoir. Let's talk about the reservoir real quick. Yep. Reservoir slides right on out. Uh, you got a little gasket in there. If that gets a little dried out, uh, it can be a little bit harder to uh, pull in and out. So if you mm -hmm. ever struggle with getting in and out there, uh, just put a little lubrication on there. It'll slide in out easier. Uh, you've also got a uh, float inside the reservoir. It's, uh, you have the reservoir there, it's kind of hard to see through it, but right up at the front edge here, there's a little magnetic float in there. So check to make sure that that's in there and it moves freely, otherwise it won't trigger the water level system. Okay, and push it in. back in. Yep. Okay. And Just make sure it's nice. It in? No, we didn't. We did not plug it in. And the water's over by you, so I'll let you dump the water in. Um, one thing to notice up here when we're putting the water in is access to the OPV which is very nice. So you can change your brew pressure if you'd like to. Uh, Brian, you do that by putting in the back flush disc, operating the pump and, yep. and that, yeah. Always make sure that you got your uh, flow control valve open 
when you're doing that test too. Um, you can do it with just having it completely closed and avoid having to use the uh, back flush disc. Right. But if you're doing it with the back flush disc, then just make sure that that's open and uh, you know not just barely open. It'll throw right. you off. Builds up pressure a lot slower if uh, the flow control isn't open. And yeah, we'll talk a little bit about you know the kind of water after we make some drinks that you want to put in there, how to treat your water to keep your machine running really, really well. Um, as you continue to fill up, I'll just go kind of through the machine. You probably know this if you already purchased one, but again, you got the OPV adjustment up here. Um, we have the dual gauge up here for both brew pressure and this pressure in your boiler. Uh, over under here where you can't see, there's a little three position switch. Um, so that lets you select from three different temperatures. We'll show you how to use that to really kick up the steam pressure when you go to steam milk, but it's right over here. Um, so we got that. Okay, so we're, we got some water in there. Yeah. Um, so just hit the That's power, it. right? Yep. yep. Flip it up for your green light to come on. You hear the pump start to activate. Uh, notice how we have the cover still off. That's because we like to watch the water level inside the reservoir as it's starting to fill just to make sure that the water level is going down. Uh, if you notice that it's not going down, uh, this can happen from time to time. Uh -huh. uh, the pump can just get a little bit of vapor lock in it just from being drained and shipped and everything like that. Uh, if you do notice that, it's filling up for me right now, but uh, if you have this issue, all you gotta do is lift up on the reservoir a little bit, about a quarter inch, you'll hear the pump sort of make a different tone. Okay. And then just quickly push it down and what that does is just kind of like burps out the air that's in the line and forces some of the water into the pump so that it can continue to fill. <coughs> so it takes a, a minute here or so, right? Yep. And then, um, <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, good. All right, so <coughs> the other thing that we're going to want to do once this is actually finished filling up the steam boiler is we're going to lift up the brew lever and let it run water out of there. Uh, this is important to do just because you're going to end up with uh, a void inside there. It's just going to be air inside the heat exchange tube, uh, which can cause a little bit of knocking and clanking when it's heating up. Uh, it's not unnormal at all to hear a little bit of uh, noises coming from the <coughs> boiler as it heats up. Think of it just like a uh, pot of water on your stove. It's going to make a couple sounds. So You can let that go right into the drip tray, but if yep. you like to keep it a little clean, so Take a little Pyrex there and just let some water come through. Exactly. It shouldn't be enough coming out. You're not going to let enough out of here that it's going to uh, overflow the drip tray, but just to keep things clean. Everyone knows that I like to make sure that Mark's studio stays nice and clean. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Uh, once you're ready to have the machine starting to heat up, put your port of filter on there. You don't need to crank it on really hard. Uh, just on there enough that it's not going to accidentally fall off or anything. Uh, and this is because we want the portafilter to heat up along with the group head for optimum stability of temperature. Now, when it's uh, heated up, what else can we expect to, to see happen here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so right now, as the machine's heating, I don't know if you guys are able to hear it, but you, there's like a uh, light like rushing sound. It's like, just like I said, with the uh, pot of water on the stove. Yeah. It's that kind of sound there. Uh, once the machine gets closer to full temperature, uh, about 212 degrees, the boiling point, uh, you're going to experience a little bit of steam and some drips of water coming out. There's the little uh, spout right on the front here. Yep, there you go. Uh, so you'll see some of that coming out of there. That's completely normal. That's the vacuum relief valve doing what it's supposed to do. It's open during the first heat up, and then as it builds pressure, it closes it. So you'll have that little bit come out there. So every every time you turn the machine on and heat it up, you're going to get that. Exactly. That's totally normal. Yep. Right. Okay. So uh, we're pretty much there, right? Yeah. Now just let let it heat up, and you know what do we say? You know, you know, somewhere around 20 minutes ish. Or yeah, so. 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. Yep. To get total temperature stability. Yep. Um, okay. So let's go over to our machine. It is already all heated up. Excellent. Um, I'm going to pull a shot. We're going to use a Eureka Mignon Libra. This is a grind by weight grinder. I really like this a lot. You can see up here, we're set to 17 grams. Now I talked about that three position switch under here and we're, so the front position is going to be a cooler brew temperature. Yep. It's going to be a little under 200 Fahrenheit. And if you go to the middle position, it's going to be a little over 200. And then that back position, we'll show you this in a minute. 
that's that's I use that to really crank up the steam pressure. We'll show you that when we froth some milk here in a second. Um, again, we got the dual gauge here, our flow control. Let's talk a little bit about that, where that should be if you want to run the machine as if it didn't have a flow control at all. So where would you put that? So if, uh, we want to, this is how I like to start the machine all the time whenever I'm yeah. dialing in. Uh, we're going to start at what we like to call the stock flow rate. Uh, so to get there, what you're going to want to do is close the valve all the way, all right? And then, there you go. We're going to lift the lever just to make sure that we have no water coming out. Mm -hmm. So that's how we know it's definitely closed all the way, all right? And then we're going to open it one and a quarter full rotation. So you got one and a quarter. Okay, and that gives you the stock flow rate, which on a vibration pump machine is oh, about seven, eight grams per second, yep. somewhere in there. If you have wanted to actually, you know, check and see where it is and, you know, what different flow rates you get at different valve positions, you can certainly do that. We've done that in the past. But let me pull the shot. I'm going to use an Akaya Lunar Scale to weigh and time my shot here. Um, I've got, again, the Eureka Mignon Libre here. I'm going to use this little dosing funnel that comes with this grinder. And whoop, if I set it in there right. Sorry about that, guys. A little too far. Uh, and I'm just going to select the two, and it's going to grind right to 17 grams for me. You might hear it bump a little bit as it because it's weighing the coffee as it's doing this. Yep. Yeah, it uh, does a little stop right before it hits the 17, so yeah. they can. There, there you is. go. <laughs> okay. So let's see this. Oh, we got. Let's use a tamper. I've got like a you know this bigger Profitech one over here, but this is the tamper that came with the machine. So we'll check that out. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I like the one that comes with the machine just because uh, I got smaller like fingers the... and it's easier to get my full palm over yeah. it because it's smaller like that. Okay. Well, I did a terrible job there. We'll fix that just a little bit. Okay. I'll have to get you a leveler for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like to use a leveler, but I want to use what came with the machine here. So we'll lock that in. We're set to the stock flow rate. Uh, I am going to use the scale here. Let's get that turned on. Takaya Lunar Scale, and we'll start our, we'll let that tear out, and away we go. And this will start a timer for me uh, on, the, on the drips. Looking good. And so we're looking at 17, we're looking for about, you know, 34 out in that 20 to 30 second range. And yeah, we're using Crema Wave coffee, as you can see it lives up to its name. Oh, <laughs> started talking and forgot to stop. So a couple grams over, but we're okay. I might, I might find this grind up a little bit, although we're measuring time from first drip here. So we're probably, you know, from pump on, we're probably more like in that 27, 28 seconds. Yep. So let me give that a taste. Oh yeah. It's got the little, I know this coffee is, is extracting right when it's got that little sweet note in it. Yeah. So, okay. So we did that. So let's show you, we'll, we'll pull another one here. So I'll get this cleaned out. We won't use the scale for this one. And there's my knockbox. So I'll get another one loaded up here and then we'll show you how you can kick up the, the steam. Yes. More while power. While we're doing that. And hopefully we can, we'll be able to get maybe a shot where we actually see the gauge as we're doing it and as you're steaming. And as yeah. We have a lot going on here. Uh, so let me load this up again. I do love this Libra grinder. It just makes everything so consistent. And if you're newer to espresso, consistency is key, right? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. Like I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. One of the most important tools you could ever have in your arsenal is a uh, scale, so. All right. Get that evened out. I'll try and do a better job on my first hand here. <laughs> or I'm just going to get my leveler out. Okay, we'll yep. get that in there, and I think we'll do, we'll use this glass, if that I works that for you. I love that glass, yeah. <laughs> Brian's going to froth and pour, so uh, we'll do what he wants, um, and oh, I'll let you get the milk ready, because we can, well, I'm going to just start the shot. You can brew and steam on this at the same time, and right when I start, actually right now, I'm going to just start, I'm going to push this switch back here to the third position. Yeah. All right, so 
And we'll let it go just a second. It's not going to affect our brew temperature all that much. But you can already see the steam pressure like increasing there. So I'll start the shot. And I'm going to, like I'm not using the scale or the timer this time. Um, so I'm going to guess a little bit. And I know this class pretty well where about, you know, I should be. And our steam, pre our steam pressure is hanging out up there. It's, it's looking good. How's the, how's your frothing going? It's going good. All right, that's we all good. we all know I'm not the uh, <laughs> the best latte artist out there, so my foam is never as perfect as uh, some of the paid professionals. But uh huh. And you give that a purge. Purge and wipe that wand. Keep everything nice and clean. There you go. I'll get this out for you. All righty. I'll get rid of this. We'll knock that out. All right. Let's see. This isn't going to be latte art. It's just going to be mixing it up. Like I always you say, know, art or not, still tastes great. Oh, look. Hey, I, mean, you got I a actually did get something there, there. And you kept it all in the glass. Do I, I did. Do I get to try this? You got to try it. All right. Beautiful. That's the heart just for you. Mm. Thanks. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> a little weird sometimes. No. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so that that's that. Uh, we we're all good now and ready to go. Make our next shot. Um, I will take and I'll turn this turn this uh, switch back to the center position. If I wanted to get on this machine, you know, I've used it quite a bit. So if I want to drop it back down, make sure I'm not going to overheat here. I could always take uh, if I have. Oh, you you got the Pyrex. I might just dump a little hot water out of here. Yeah. Um. Maybe just till I hear the. Right there, right till I hear the pump come on. Yep. That'll refill it just, you don't have to do that. Nope. I just want to bring that temperature down because I kicked the steam pressure up. But you can see the water entering, if we still get a shot of the gauge, that brings the pressure of that boiler back down. Yeah. And it'll, it'll recover, it'll be ready right away. And again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. No, don't have to. I, I, I will say that uh, from a tech standpoint, it's good to let a little water out once in a while. Yeah. Uh, just like that, just because it keeps the boiler refreshed, it helps prevent any kind of mineral buildup from settling down or anything like that. Yeah, you know. yeah, just mixing that in. Um, and speaking of water, I mean, you went led right into our next thing. Again, we will take your questions. And how are we doing, Brian? We have anything yet? OK, we'll hold those for a minute, because we do want to talk about water quality. Yes. So we've got a couple options over here. You saw we were filling it with a pitcher. Um, we, we like the options from BWT, uh, water and more. Um, this is their newest aqualizer, <laughs> and this was their penguin pitcher, which some people may be familiar with. It's just a redesign over here. Um, the, the, you can see it's got a, like a filter cartridge in there. It's the exact same cartridge in this, uh, but this is the new one that's going to be coming out, so we wanted to show you that. Uh, this uses a calcium to magnesium ion exchange. It also has uh, carbon filtration in there to remove chlorination. And so what that does is if you use this or any of the BWT stuff we'll look at properly, you won't cause scale in the machine. And why do we want, not want scale in our machine? It's going to kill it. It's going to uh, kill it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get scale buildup. It's going to do a few things. Uh, scale can kind of stick onto the side of the boiler and cause pitting, which is going to deteriorate it. Uh, you get reduction in flow, which kind of defeats the purpose of having our nice flow control valve, yeah. or even worse, can stop flow completely. A uh, whole, whole list of different things that it can cause issues with include seals. Yeah. I go on for days, so. Yeah. Um, and, it, let's, and let's be clear, because I, I come across this all the time in our, in our YouTube comments. People are like, I'm going to use our oil water, because then I have no minerals and there can't be any scale. And, Yes, that's true, but yeah, <laughs> there's but reasons not to do that. Yeah, Big RO reasons. water and distilled water are not going to be good for your machine for uh, two main reasons is that it's too pure and it can actually cause leaching and corrosion inside the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue is specific to machines like the Pro uh, 400 and other uh, prosumer models is yeah. they have liquid level systems that rely on conductivity of the, of the of the water and that conductivity is based on mineral content so if you don't have enough mineral content in there the machine can actually just be like oh there's no water in me i'm just going to keep filling until it blows out the safety so 
Yeah, and if we want to get really technical, I know we went through this the other day, you know, somebody asked, what, what conductivity do I need? Yeah. Uh, ECM and Profitech, they recommend four degrees of hardness. We went through and we did the uh, math, the hard 71. math. 71.39, I just looked at no. it again this morning because oh, I was it? answering a question okay. uh, directly related Parts to this. Parts per million? Yep. 71.39, so I, I, how do you get yeah, 0.39 of a, yeah. yeah <laughs> <Anyway. know. laughs> but if you, if you wanted some technical info, there you go. So two other options we have. So we got the uh, Best Save Pad Filter over here. And this is one um, that just, it uses the same technology, same calcium to magnesium ion exchange. And this, you just drop into the reservoir. So it just whoop, plop right into the reservoir there and you let it sit. And it has to sit. So if you go through a lot of water, this probably isn't the best option, but yeah. if you're doing a few shots a day and you know adding some new water in the evening or something this will this has you covered and it's yeah I, it's a good solution for you know one person operation having a drink in the morning have a drink in the yeah. evening uh, if you're gearing up to have family over for the holidays and you think you're going to be pumping out drinks like you're a mini cafe yeah. uh, you probably want to do something uh, more like the pitcher so that you can reload reload and then what other option we have is the uh, the best cup system. So this is an on-demand that sits in the reservoir, right? Tell us how that works. All right, so you got your filter here and you have the uh, receiver. So the filter pops onto the receiver. There's little O-rings on there that hold it in place. And then you just take this entire assembly, you would use the suction cup to stick it to the side of the reservoir. And this little silicone tube is going to go onto, there's a little, uh, metal nipple on the inside of the valve down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just slides right over on that, plug it in, ready to rock and roll. And that, you just fill your, you know, with just your tap water, so long as your tap water is safe to drink, that's BWT's requirement. Mm -hmm. You got tap water that's safe to drink, these options have you covered. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, we did talk about, you know, maybe taking, if you're only ever steaming and not taking water off for Americanos, turn over a little water in your boiler every once in a while. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's, that's good practice no matter if you're using filtered water or not. It's, it's yeah. always good to flush out the system and, it, as I always call it, is a boiler refresh. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, so unless I'm forgetting something, let's go to questions, right? That yeah, works for me. All right, Brian, what do we got back there? Yeah, we've, got a, we've got a nice one from Domenico. Uh, he wants to know, uh, w without a visual PID, how do you know when the machine is properly warmed up? question. Um, I, I have ideas on that. So I would pay attention to, number one, the time since you've turned the machine on. Um, and usually when we talk to manufacturers, uh, especially ECM and PropTech, they say the, their sweet point after turn on or where you know you know you're good with your temperatures is at 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. Um, like all heat exchange machines, I don't care who makes it, over time if it just sits idle, it's going to warm, it's going to warm up a little bit more, right? Yep. Um, so at that point, like if it's been sitting for an hour unused, you want to give it a little flush. But with a three temperature switch, you know, I'd, realize, I'd be taking a look at my pressure gauge right here and know that, you know, when I'm in that middle position, I'm at like the 1.2-ish right here mm -hmm. bar, and I know that that's when I'm at temperature. And as you saw when we went back to the, th and I'm just going to flip this again so we can see how quickly this rises. So I'm flipping back to the third position, and if you'll watch the gauge here, you can see it increasing, increasing, increasing. And I think it's going to go up to pretty close to or right around 1.5 there. But you can see how quickly that heats up and gives you that extra steaming power yeah. that some people want. Now look, you don't have to do that. Um, some people, especially if you're newer, they might like a little less steam pressure because you have more time to work the milk. Yeah, right? yeah. That's, that's where I like to keep it. A little yeah. bit more control when you have uh, less pressure slamming out of it. If you're a former barista cranking drinks out all day, you want all the pressure you could have, so you can just crank them. So, yep. uh, any more? Um, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll just ahead. add to that just a little bit. Um, I agree 100% with watching the gauge. The gauge mm -hmm. is going to be your indication when it hits its apex. That's how you know it's done heating yeah. this, this, the steam boiler, the service boiler side of it. Uh, if you're talking about the initial heat up oh, time yeah. of the machine, uh, knowing when it's, re when it's ready, even on a PID machine, that's going to show you the boiler temperature, not right. necessarily the group temperature. Uh, good way to tell whether or not you're at uh, temperature is by touching the bottom of your portafilter. If the bottom of the portafilter is really hot, like mm -hmm. the top of it, don't, don't do this. This is hot. <laughs> don't do that but, at home. Yeah. You know, uh, if you just 
pad it real quick, see, it's, make sure it's really hot. That's how you know the group is fully heated to the point where it's transferred all that heat also to the porta filter. Yeah. More, Brian? Okay. Yeah. Um, do, the, I, I wasn't sure about this. Uh, does this machine offer any sort of pre-infusion function? And if so, can it be adjusted? Um, well, no. But if you have the flow control on it, you can yeah. pre-infuse in any manner you like, right? Exactly. I mean, we can kind of show that. Um, so right now, we're open to that stock flow rate pretty much. But if you just cranked it down and no flow right now, well, let's do a little gentle pre-infusion, right? So there. You can see just barely dripping. Um, and there's a lot of techniques now where you're doing this little low, just getting your puck saturated, then just stopping yep. and just letting it sit and bloom, especially like maybe on a really fresh coffee, and then going back out and kind of maybe slowly ramping up to you know, a more stock flow rate. And if you want to, there are some really weird techniques where you can just even go over the top of the flow rate, um, which isn't something you probably do very often. Um, but you, you can do that. So you can do all the pre, pre infusion you want with the flow control. You can even use, you know, it does with the flow, you will have a pressure gauge that's monitoring pressure in the group. Yep. So that if you wanted to, you know, kind of use pressure as your method of deciding what you want to do, you can certainly do that. Yeah. So, yeah. We're all, we're all good? All right. Well, look, guys, thanks to Brian. Thank you so much for, for being with me. And thanks for having me. Oh, what's up, Brian? Why don't, why don't you take a moment to show us how to back flush? Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we got the, do you still have the disc over there? I mean, I have Where did I hide it? <laughs> ah, oh, yes. in the hiding spot. There totally it is. Right where we forget where it is. So do you want to, oh, show the little trick. All right, little trick. You got the original basket on there. You want to get it off. A lot of people are sitting there trying to get it with their fingernails. Don't do that. Use the edge of, doesn't have to be the back flush disc. It can be any of the baskets. You just use the rim of it, get underneath it and twist, and it pops up enough that you can get it out. Mm -hmm. Better than using a screwdriver or a paint can opener, right? Yeah. <laughs> there are little tools meant for that. So we've got some cafes over there and yeah. our little scoops brush, which we like. Okay. We got Kafiza. Open it up. Got a little scoop right on the end there. Um, I so say yesterday, I think uh, it says two scoops, but if you do it regularly, uh, you may not need to do quite as much cleaner. Uh, it's obviously, we are in the studio here, so we take very good care of these machines, so it shouldn't need that much of a back flush. But so you get it locked in there with the Kafiza in there, and we're going to follow the 10 10 10 rule. Uh, mm -hmm. th what that is, we're going to lift the lever and let the machine build pressure for 10 seconds. And right now what it's doing is it's mixing up that cleaner inside the back flushing disc. And then what I like to do is go to the halfway position. Uh, that's where it's not activating either of the valves, the uh, top or the bottom valve, so it's not going to flush it down. Just giving you another couple seconds to activate the cleanser, lift it up for a couple more seconds, and then drop it. And now you'll see that you got that sort of a milky look, and it's coming out right at the end there, starting to get a little bit browner. And then we're just going to do that again. Again, 10 seconds on for the pressure. And then drop. And what you're going to want to do is uh, do that, again, depending on how dirty the machine is, you're going to see how dirty it is by what's coming out of the uh, discharge down here. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's coming out, you know, if I do this one more time and it's still coming out pretty white, then it's definitely already clean, and I really don't need to yeah. go too aggressive on this. Which there you go. You, you don't want to. You don't want to overclean with with the detergents like e Kifisa, exactly. Right? Yeah, uh, I always recommend uh, doing just a water back flush every once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, it keeps it clean, but it doesn't strip off the lubrication from inside the machine. So I just rinsed out the basket real quick. I'm gonna throw it back on there, and then. Again, the 10, 10, 10, and this is just rinsing that cleanser out of there. So you're just gonna do that maybe, I don't know, four to six times until yeah, you see Yeah, no what I'll do, I'll do it here. twice real quick, and mm -hmm. I, you don't necessarily need to go the full 10 seconds for this yeah. final version here, um, but you're gonna wanna just check what you have in the basket there, run some water out 
into the basket again and just see if it's coming out soapy. If it's coming out soapy still, then you know you want to back flush a couple more times. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's starting to look clear though, you're all set. And you, I know you, you say at home that you like do the plain, way, plain water back flushing yeah. like yeah. almost daily, right? Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm neurotic about it. I back flush with water only every day that I use the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my regular back flushes with uh, cleaner, depending on how much I'm using it, sometimes I'll do it once a month. Uh, mm -hmm. but that's also, I work into that same schedule doing my boiler refresh. So I do my chemical back flush and then I will actually open up my hot water tap and let it run water out until it stops running water out, close it and let it refill. So that's my refresh and yeah. deep clean. Nice, all yeah. right. Oh, another question, okay. Uh, Peter wanted to know how, about how heavy is it? Uh, specifically, can one person carry it up four flights of stairs? <clears throat> wow, didn't you see it? Did you see our thumbnail? Because <laughs> Brian went ham on here. He was just holding that thing for a couple minutes. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this one, I believe, is 45 to 50 pounds. Yeah. Um, when you get it, it's not going to be in just oh, yeah. Listen. this box. Um, this box has... Handles? Handles on it. They're not technically called handles, but I won't oh, get okay. into that. It's from my shipping <laughs> okay. days. Uh, okay. So if you were to take it out of, it's going to have a outer box that's around that. Um, if you take it out of that, you shouldn't have an issue taking it up the stairs. Um, just take it slow. Four, just be four careful. Four flights at 45? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be breathing I'm, a little hard, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm 41 mm -hmm. in pretty good condition. I like to yeah. go mountain climbing, but I'd probably take one or two breaks on the way up the stairs. But it, it should be doable. Or have a friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're definitely safer having a friend help out, but sure. yeah. All right. Anything else, Brian? Okay, we're all good. All right. Well, guys, listen, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we do monitor those comments. So if you have more questions about the Pro 400 getting your setup, use the comments down there. We do keep an eye on those. Brian, thanks again so much uh, for thanks helping for us out me. here. And yeah, again, thanks for you guys for watching. And we're going to see you back here soon for more of the Best on Everything Coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.